when there is a gap between our expectations, what we think the journey should look like and what it actually is, there's this big gap between those two places. And I call that the land of the lost. Right. And so when we say it's not working, then we quit. We abandon that strategy or that method. And then we go back to the beginning of the drawing board. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 166 of the Game On Girlfriend podcast. Today, I am bringing you Amanda Walker, who is a certified master coach and she coaches coaches, which I just think is so cool, right? Because what do I always say, you guys? I always say I'm a coach who always has a coach. And what I really love about Amanda's approach is this very common sense, right? She's very gentle. She's very smart. But in this interview, we really got to the important things that I want you to listen for, which is the squirrel effect and the land of the lost. When she said the land of the lost and defined what that is, I almost died. I was like, oh my gosh, how many people are living in the land of the lost? And it's just such an important concept. And I really hope you take a second to listen to that definition, but also to sort of put yourself in that experience. We've all been in the land of the lost as Amanda defines it. And it's a really scary, uncomfortable place to be. But there's also so much that we can learn from it. And I think the way that she talks about it and the way that we approach it together in the podcast will really help, especially if you've been feeling stuck or you're feeling like you're living with a whole bunch of unmet expectations because it's important that we understand unmet expectations are part of growing a business. It's part of what we all do, all of us crazy people who love our own businesses, right? What we do is we have these massive expectations and inevitably we'll have a moment where they're not met. And so I love the way that we talk about that together inside this podcast episode. So you might not even be a coach and you're gonna get a boatload out of that piece of the podcast. Now we talk about why it's so important that businesses that are run by coaches are actually seen as businesses. Now she dropped a stat in this episode and I think my jaw is still somewhere on my desk because I was like, bless you, what? She said that the online coaching industry will be a 20 billion, yes, that's with a B like boy, in 2023, that is a lot of dollars being moved around the planet. One of the things that makes me really happy about is that people are starting to understand the value of coaching, right? It's really starting to understand like, oh my gosh, this is altering my behavior. This is altering my life. That's what great coaches do. And I've been talking to you guys more about that on the podcast recently, as well as in Sarah Uncut. So I hope you listen to the way that Amanda supports all of these beautiful humans who are out there in the world right now honoring their ability to coach, honoring their ability to really connect with other people and make a difference. And so if that's why you started your business, whether you're a coach or not, I think you're going to get a lot out of today's podcast episode. So without further ado, let's jump in to our conversation with Amanda. Pop in those earphones. Amanda, welcome to the Game on Girlfriend podcast. I'm so happy you're here today. Thank you. I'm so excited and uh, the energy feels good. So I'm ready to do the thing with you today. I love it. I love it. So listen, we're going to be talking about why coaches don't make more money, which is very near and dear to my heart. You know, as coaches, it's so awful to watch coaching businesses fail or to watch coaches not have really beautiful lifestyles or anything that they want really when they're helping so many people and they're doing such mm -hmm. a great job. So I'm super excited to jump into that. But before we do, can you tell all of our girlfriends a little bit about why this is what you do? Like, why do you help coaches be the best damn coach? Yeah. Well, I started coaching when I was 15 and my first coaching job was coaching. If you, you can't see me right now, but I'm air quoting the word coaching <laughs> because I was coaching. Um, I got hired by a local uh, YMCA to coach basketball to peewee, like peewee basketball. So it's five and six year old boys. And it was my first opportunity to a like drive myself. Well, I wasn't even driving quite yet, but I, uh, I held the job long enough that I eventually drove myself, but, um, it was a pivotal moment for me. I had no idea when I was in it for a couple of reasons. It taught me so much about just management of people and commanding the room and mm. being it like, there's no harder audience than five or six year olds. Like if you've been a parent, you know, this or a teacher <laughs> of little people, um, so that, that was relevant, but what I really learned from that moment was 
like how magical the feeling is when you can pour into another human and they respond with some sort of transformation and you and them, you're just like so giddy. There's a mutual giddiness happening between the two of you around those results. And so that was really the domino that hit so many other dominoes in my life down of coaching from, um, you know, coaching, continuing to coach sports. I became a teacher and a coach, went to grad school for both of those things. I coached Mm. teachers. I coached track. I coached basketball. I am CrossFit certified as a coach, coached CrossFit for 10 years. And my business began in the nutrition and health space um, as, you know, running a coaching business. And that's when I fell into entrepreneurship and come full circle and fast forward what I really realized. And I used to say this as a teacher, give me science, which I taught anatomy and physiology, give me language arts, give me art, give me choir. Mm. It really wasn't the content. It was about the delivery of the content and peeling Mm. the content layers apart that I really loved. And I love being able to just give them something and test them and find ways to, to see their retention. And I think full circle, that's what's landed me here and just the art of coaching and just seeing the clients before me and being able to pull out the best in them. Mm. My clients Mm. are like, you see the magic before I do. And I'm like, yeah, (laughs) that's kind of the point. So now I feel so grateful to run a coaching business where I am coaching coaches, online service providers, Mm. and just mostly women in general on how to grow their results and truly, you know, perform however they want to in their life. That's so cool. That's so cool. So in loving the magic of coaching, right. And understanding that, and I couldn't agree more. That is so cool. How did you get from that to actually really helping coaches understand how to make money doing this, that this is a living, this is a profession. This is not a nice to have, or because you're good with people, you should just fall into coaching. Like this is a business. How did you get into sort of helping coaches understand that? Yeah. I think the important thing for me is I came from no, no business background. I did not grow up around entrepreneurial parents. Mm -hmm. I never sold anything. I've never into sales. I don't even know what the corporate world was like because that's not Mm -hmm. teaching. Right. And I came in blank canvas and the greatest lesson for me and the greatest teacher was taking action, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you the most feedback. And I share that because I think what I want to show is anything is possible for anyone. You do not have to, all the, all the excuses that people lay out around, I don't have, I don't have, Mm. I had them all and I get where it's, it's, you know, you have to come from, but what I think really landed me full circle in, in coaching is the barrier of entry is nominal. It's minimal. Literally today I could decide I'm a coach and become a coach tomorrow in the industry because it's loosely regulated. And it's really up to us at the end of the day to build out, uh, you know, our own personal integrity around how we deliver results. Mm. And I think that's got, it's two, two parts Mm. to that. It's beautiful because (laughs) I don't think you need a certification to be a phenomenal coach. And also the challenges, we have a lot of people in the industry that don't hold the integrity and the high standards that I know both you and I do. Mm -hmm. And so I want to find that sweet spot of teaching people how to overcome the imposter syndrome and to show that you can cultivate results. And if you're changing people, people's lives, like you can own that and you can simultaneously be working on growing your credentials and uphold standards and rigor inside your own personal value system, Mm -hmm. but also with the resources that are available outside of you, which are plenty. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's so important for us to own the power of coaching, right? I mean, like you said, you can change somebody's life. I don't even know how to put a value on that. Mm -mm. And I'm not trying to like blow up coaches or and be like, yeah, we're so amazing. But I think it's actually the opposite. I don't think there's enough of that. Genuinely, I'm not talking about the crazy bro guru market. I'm talking about coaches who actually work with people and alter human behavior and what's, what's available when we do that. And that's so powerful. So as we're looking at that for other coaches, what do you find to be the biggest reason that coaches are sort of struggling with cash flow that they're not able to have the cash in their businesses that that they really want and need. Yeah. I mean, biggest reason, I think it's really dependent upon the person. Mm. Um, but one of the main reasons I see is that we are we have this mindset that we're not salespeople. And so we're like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a coach and I'm, I'm going to help change lives. And so we have so many limiting, you know, beliefs and limiting thoughts around what it means like to set 
put, to put ourselves in a position to let people know that we serve. And mm. they've probably most likely had a situation in their life where they were sold to and it felt sleazy and gross. Yes. And so yeah. they've made that picture in their mind around that is sales. And so now we have to transfer that over into selling us, right? Yeah. When we have so much deep inner conflict around worthiness and our ability to receive cash and to be paid for a service that is like giving, right? Like we just, we want to change lives and Mm. we shouldn't, we shouldn't put a dollar amount on that. And I think that's one of the primary stuck places for so many that are just amazing coaches. They're amazing at their craft. Mm -hmm. And also they have this money stuff that gets in the way of them being able to step through that. Yeah. And what should, so let's say we have someone listening who's a coach and they're like, oh my gosh, that's me. Raise hand. Hello. What would you suggest they do first? Like what would be something, someone who's really up against this? Let's say they're a phenomenal coach, but they've been through the slimy growth sales processes. Um, They've been sold to that way. And that just feels gross. What's one of thing that they could do to start to sort of change that pathway? This is super tech tactical. This just comes to mind immediately. What I would invite them to do is write down all the thoughts that they have about selling and Mm. about sales in their business. So just create like a bullet list right now. And then what I would want them to do, or what I want you to do next is I want you to go back and I want you to label them as a T or an F for thought or fact. Mm. And here's how I categorize thought. A thought is just something we routinely choose in our mind where a fact is something that could be upheld in a court of law. A judge would be like, boom, fact. And I want you to go back and just label them and then step back from like a 10,000 foot view and just notice what you notice about that. Mm. And what I would suspect is the majority of things that are listed on that paper are just thoughts. Mm. And the beautiful thing about that is you have the choice to reframe them and they are not fact in your life. So if you think sales feel gross, well, that's just your thought. And we can shift that into some sort of transitional thought or belief so that we can slowly like shift the mold and break down some of those thoughts, those stories around sales that are holding you back. So you can feel a lot more free to move forward. Love it. I love it. So I hope you guys listening. I felt like someone was listening. I don't know. Do you ever have that <laughs> feeling? You're like, someone needed to know something there. So we, we hope I that just was imagined helpful. all these people yeah. going, grab my pencil. Pen, pen, pen. <laughs> it's not true or false. It's not true or false. It's no. thought or fact, right? Yeah. I can <laughs> yeah. totally picture that. I'm like, go guys, go, let's go. I love that. Um, and the other thing that you talk about, Amanda, that's really interesting is the squirrel effect. So mm-hmm. first of all, describe what the squirrel effect is. And then why is that even relevant? Like, what are we talking about here? It's tied together with this whole notion of where I say like coaches go to the land of the lost. I'm actually going to pull both of those together. Okay. Um, So if you could imagine we were uh, graphing results over time, right? And so we go Mm -hmm. on this entrepreneurial journey, we sign up, we're like, we're going to coach. And so the vision we have, just like most things on a health journey or a relationship journey, we're like, forward up. This is a positive correlation, right? I put in a week's worth of work. I get a week's worth of return. And we see this positive correlation in our brain happening. You and I both know, because we've been on this journey that is nowhere near where the heck the journey actual go actually goes. Right. But the problem is we set expectations. Mm. So we're going to put our offer out into the world. And our expectation is a hundred percent of the people buy it. Right. And in the beginning, do you remember how cute it was when you're in the beginning? You're like, all the people are going to buy everything I put out there. And you're like quickly like, oh no, it's a lot more work to let them know the value of what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when there is a gap between our expectations, what we think the journey should look like and what it actually is, there's this big gap between those two places. And I call that the land of the lost because Mm. people are floundering. And when our expectations don't meet that reality of what's happening, what we tell ourselves in our brain is it's not working. Right. And so when we say it's not working, then we quit. We abandon that strategy or that method. And then we go back to the beginning of the drawing board and we're like, okay, what other shiny object squirrel yes. out there exists? And can I go and try that now? And that of course, doesn't go as we air quote expected. And so we're in this chronic place of chasing the squirrel and starting over. And so we Mm. never really make traction in our business because we're not sticking to the one strategy and asking ourselves what's working. How do I double down on it? And what's not working? How do I become a problem solver so that I can keep sticking with the same method and just make it better over time? Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing is, I mean, 
one, I love the term, the land of the lost. That's so great. The gap between expectations and reality, right? I love that. And it really sounds to me and the way I've studied it, that that is like the skill of grit of yes. like really looking, right? I love how you just described that. I thought that was so neat where it's really just like, okay, so what's working, what's not working and what do I want to double down on? And I, I feel like overall, I'd love to know how you feel about this with coaches, especially because here are so many incredible people, so highly trained and the ability to coach others. But when they're in the land of the lost, because it is so freaking uncomfortable, <laughs> it is not a fun place to hang out, right? Of True. like ah, yes. unmet expectations, ah, right? How can we help somebody who's in that moment develop the skill of grit? Like it's one thing for us to talk about it, right? Because we can, and, and I think anybody listening goes, yeah, no, that makes sense. All you YouTubers are like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, right? Like, like it's like, yeah, I got this, I got but then it's like, okay, but what do you do when you're in the middle of that? And you're like, I must suck or I'm stupid or the whole thing's stupid or everything's dumb and nothing's ever going to work. I quit. When someone's in that moment, what can they do? Yeah. Two, two pieces of coaching come, come to mind. The first is a, a quote that I say to my clients all the time, and it is your ability to delay gratification is directly correlated to your long-term success, right? <laughs> so your ability to say, I don't need the feedback right now to tell me I'm successful and that this will be successful is going to take you far. And I go right to like simple metaphor, and that is the scale, if I step on the scale and I keep looking at it every day and it does not go the way I want, then I am likely to abandon ship and say it's not working. But if I put that scale in the closet or better yet, take a sledgehammer to it and throw it out, then I'm going to keep going because I'm like, I'm not trying to, it, what I what I lose in a week is not as important as what I lose in a year. And I'm going to delay right. that feedback until then. Same thing happens in our business. I'm going to keep posting on social media, even if it's crickets right? Because I am okay with not getting that immediate feedback. And in fact, I'm proud. Here's it. Here is it. Only 2% of your content is seen. You're probably not going to get feedback or 3%. Insert or eye roll here. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's so true, right? Yeah. It's so yes. tough. And so on that vein, what the challenge for many of us is we've grown up being uh, relying on a, 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 a away from motivational strategy, which means we're motivated to take action when we're in the pain of something. So in business, we're motivated to launch something when our bank account is zero, right? Mm. We're like, mm. oh shoot, I got no income. I got to do right. something about it, right? Which is how a lot of entrepreneurs exist, especially in the beginning, because we're just trying to keep our head above water mm. and we don't really see the future. And so it creates this roller coaster of not just money, but also clients, because we don't have consistent attraction strategy to bring them in. Right. Yeah. And that's also very exhausting. And this yeah. is why I believe personally, people don't last long in the industry is they're pain motivated. And so what we mm -hmm. as practitioners, then, you know, I believe all, my role as a coach is to help all of my clients tap into a toward motivational strategy and recognize when it's not being relied upon. And that means that we're so focused on where we want to go that we don't need the feedback right now. We know like I'm creating this thing and that's deeply attached to whatever generically you want to call it your why or your purpose or that fire inside of you that yeah. everybody, that elusive thing. Right. But that's different to everybody. And it's seasonal. You know, if I'm in $50,000 of debt, my why might be to get out of debt right now. And mm -hmm. that's like so fiery for me that I connect to that, but it also might be to take care of my, you know, aging parents. It might be to uh, create total debt freedom and financial independence and put a million dollars in the bank. I don't know what that is for you, but when we begin to tap into a strategy inside of our brain, this isn't like the word motivation, but it's what sets us on a path towards action. When it is toward focus, then it just makes everything else very clear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm hearing too, there's a difference between pain motivation and inspiration motivation as well. And really, I think understanding for each of us kind of have to dig deep and understand what that is for us both, because I think we're both driven to avoid the pain. Like you're talking about the $0 in the bank account, right? We're, we're so trained to avoid that pain, but we also will do a lot to go towards pleasure. <laughs> yes. And so we need to understand how to use those levers on ourselves. 
so that yeah, we well can said. continue to get the best performance out of us. And um, I think what you said too, about our ability to delay gratification, I love that so much. And it reminds me of one of my favorite books, The Slight Edge, where he talks about the unsexy tasks. Oh all yeah, I say you have to do all the time. I have not I read that it. book, but I've heard it's it's come into my world. So I definitely need to yeah. read it. Well, it's cool. I mean, it's very similar to what you're saying too, but the idea that there's a whole slew of unsexy tasks, all the things we can do when no one else is watching, right? It's not stuff we put on social media. <laughs> it's not all the sexy stuff, but like how much that matters. I love that you talk about delayed gratification. I feel like that conversation deserves a lot more attention in our industry um, because everybody feels like everything should be so instant, right? Like you said, I should launch the course and that should be it, right? 100% of the people who see it will just buy it because it's amazing and that that's not how it works. Agreed. And what I think is a lot of people don't realize they're doing it in other aspects of their life. And the biggest area that I see people doing it and they don't know is in parenting. Like talk about delaying gratification. Look at how much work and energy you're putting into raising a human being. You don't know what's coming up the pipeline. You're just <laughs> believing in a future that does not exist and hoping you're producing this most amazing human being that goes out into the world and does great things. I'm delaying that gratification, but I am putting all of my resources into a toward motivation, a forward vision that I see. And so you're probably doing it. It's just that you're doing it in a new area. And so that doesn't feel like it, it's it's actually happening in the moment. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. And yeah, parenting is a massive exercise. <laughs> Gratification for sure, for sure. So I've loved talking to you about this. Before we get into the amazing masterclass you have available for our people, Amanda, is there anything that you hope someone listening today and they're like, okay, that's it that's it. I'm learning the skill of grit. I'm going to stop with the squirreling. I know I've been in the land of the lost. What would you want them to take away from what we've said today? What one thing do you hope people really remember? I think not anything that I've already said, actually, it's something different that a mentor <laughs> offered me early on in business. And my kids were little. And mm -hmm. like I mentioned, zero experience in any things related to business. Um, but the suggestion or the offer he, he gave me was do one thing a day, just do one thing a day. And so, and, and that's to move the needle forward, right? Not necessarily on existing delivery. It's one email. It's one pitch. It's one, I don't know, whatever is relative, you know, for what the work that you do in the world, but the, the compound, the, the stacking of that one thing. And some days you're going to have a lot of room for lots of one things. And sometimes it's literally just going to be one. But mm -hmm. I, I think that we don't give credit to the power of consistent action. And it will, you know, consistency trumps all things. Yes, blah, blah, blah. That sounds amazing. But I'm just like a living, breathing example of, of that. And I think that we don't give a credit or attention enough, as you said, to the unsexy actions. And you just have to figure out what is that one thing that's going to move the needle the most in your business specifically and stay true to that over time because it, it stacks up to literally create millions of dollars. And mm -hmm. I didn't think in the beginning that that was true. I love it. It's so good. That's so good. Um, so Amanda, so tell us now, somebody probably just had a pop moment of like, oh my God, I know what I can do tomorrow. This is amazing. If somebody wants to learn more about this masterclass, can you tell us what it is and where they should go to, to find out about it? Of course. So as you mentioned, I coach coaches on the art of coaching and the skill of growing a unique coaching practice. And uh, the statistic I like to share most recently is that the Online coaching industry is projected to be a $20 billion industry in 2023. And whoo, mind blowing, right? That's I know, that, so many that dollars. Shows, yeah, yeah, the value uh, of the industry. It shows how we are recognizing the power of coaching, as you mentioned. And what that means to me is there's a lot of coaches who are going to want lots of clients. And so the market is saturated. And so one of the questions I always get is how do then I stand out mm. in my niche, right? How do I stand out when there's other people doing what I'm doing? And so that's why I walk you through that answer inside the masterclass. So it's called how to stand out as a coach so you can make more money without spending a dollar on marketing because I am not a I'm not into spending all the money on marketing strategies. There's so many ways to grow your business authentically with a small 
audience. Mm. And so I walk you through that um, entire process on the masterclass, which you can head over to amanda-walker.com forward slash masterclass to sign up for whatever time works for you. I love it. I love it. All right, you guys, we are going to have that link in the show notes or underneath this video. If you're watching us on YouTube, Amanda, this has just been amazing. I'm so glad that we got to spend this time together. And I love that you coach coaches. I just think I just, it's like edible. It's so delicious. So wonderful. Thank you, Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. I think we have a couple girlfriends whose, whose uh, eyeballs are a little bit wider now. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Honored to be with you and chat with your people.